Hi everyone. Hey, it's Monday again. Hope you had a really good weekend. I wanted to share with you some things that I've been doing this past week and finished over the weekend. I do some um, craft shows and things in the, the fall and so I'm starting to get things ready for that. And I had a whole lot of rusted tin ornaments and let me see, let me show you what they started out as. I have some uh, stars that I haven't finished yet and they're just very thin rusted tin ornaments and very inexpensive. You can find them in a lot of different places. Um, and so what I did with them is, you know, I have really just fallen in love with the metallic stains, the new metallic uh, distress stains. I've got them all sitting around me somewhere. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the um, antique bronze, the tarnished brass, and the brushed pewter. And uh, so what I did was I used those stains to cover up the uh, rusted tin stars. Let's see, here's one with the tarnished brass stain on it. And they cover really well, but you might want to use um, three or four coats of the stain just to get some really opaque coverage unless you're going to do a lot of things to them and then it, it doesn't really matter so much but that's what I started out doing and then on some of these others now this is um, also rusted rusty tin ornament but it's a dimensional star and then also what I did on some of these was I took my alcohol inks the metallics and just see like this I have my copper one sitting here and um, there, there's a silver and a pearl and a copper and a gold so I covered them with these also you know these these things are made the alcohol inks are made for um, for tin and non porous materials so they cover excellently and then I just used different colors like on this one I used the silver alcohol ink and then I also used uh, let me think <laughs> which one I did use. I think cranberry was the color that I used on this one. And I used uh, sailboat blue and aqua on this one. Um, denim, sailboat blue, and purple twilight on this one. This one was red pepper and lettuce and citrus on a gold background. So you can really do a lot with these. And then what I did was I took my stamps and this one is, um, I, I am in, totally in love with the new Tim Holtz classic stamps. The, this is the one, the one that has the ar architectural um, things on it. And uh, let's see, here's one that has the, just the art and the faces. And so I stamped those with um, Ranger's Archival Ink because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any bleeding or anything else when, if I decided to put something else over them. Um, with this I used uh, pigment ink, white pigment ink, and uh, some, next, some little stamps that I had. And this is the same. And this one is back to the archival ink. I also um, did some embossing. Like with this one I understamped in just the regular uh, archival ink, uh, one of the architectural stains, and then I took a another st uh, stamp that I have. It, it's a kind of a um, a wistful looking uh, woman, and put that over on top of it and emboss this one so the the girl stands out. Here's here's a better picture of her. There, I, I, you know, you may recognize that stamp. It's been around a while. I think it's from Stampland. And so then. You know, and I did, you know, both sides of most of these. And this one, I used um, the uh, Clear Rock Candy Crackle on this one. A couple of these I sprayed with per Perfect Pearls Mist, like this one I did to make it look like snow. And this is a, um, just a, a stamp that I got from Michaels. And this is one of Tim Holtz's Christmas stamps. Now, let's see. There's another one. A couple of Tim Holtz stamps in there. And this one I also, um, I used 
uh, the crackle stamp on the Joyful Song Tim Holtz stamp. I understamped with the uh, music and then I did the crackle and I embossed it with, um, let me find it, it's uh, by Ranger and it's Antiquities Cement embossing and that's quite different. It's uh, not quite like the Distress embossing but it's a little like that and it's uh, very matte, quite different. And then I uh, stamped the uh, embossed the angel over top of that embossing and then stamped the angel and the music again on the back. And then after I got through with those, then I started putting on some embellishments. And this is a, a word key by Tim Holtz. It's the one that says heart, and I thought that was quite appropriate. And I put one of the corners down here on the bottom of the point of the heart, and I really liked that. And this, and also this piece right here, is a piece of jewelry that I got and tore apart. Um, they were on like 40% off at Michael's one day and they it's probably supposed to be made into bracelets or something like that but I liked them just the pieces of them and I got them and so I'm pulling them apart and using them for pendants and for talismans and for just you know charms to hang on things and I thought this one looked a lot enough like a snowflake to work on on my snowflake star and this one is uh, this whole thing is kind of architectural and and different and maybe avant-garde so I put this on the back because it just doesn't really look like anything but maybe an architectural element so I had a lot of fun doing these um, this one I used some stickles on and this one I also used stickles but I used the sticky embossing powder and embossed that for these holly leaves and then put glitter over top of that so I just had a lot of fun um, I took some of these elements and snipped off the uh, the little circle where you hang them as charms. These were some brads and I cut off the backs. No, I didn't cut them off. I drilled a hole with my drill press, which is sitting around here somewhere. Yeah, my little Tim Holtz drill press. I drilled holes in it and attached the brads. And then, um, and then I, here's a word key that I put alcohol ink on. It, and it says wish and then I had some uh, ribbons that I had gotten from uh, their paper studio which is I think Hobby Lobby's brand and the back of this ribbon is white so what I did is I took the um, distress stains this one happens to be wild honey and colored the back so that they wouldn't be white and it does kind of um, come over into the front you know it bleeds into the front so you want to make sure that you know what you're going to be getting before you uh, decide on a color this one also has the white wild honey on it and this made the words a lot darker I started out with a darker um, stain and then I took another length of the ribbon and uh, lightened up my stain because then that lightened up my words quite a bit so um, Oh, and this one, I had a metal tag, rusty metal tag, and I took some of the architectural stamps from Tim Holtz and glued a little um, brass charm to it, crown charm, and made a keychain out of it using one of uh, Tim Holtz's clips there and a, um, a keychain base that I bought at Hobby Lobby. So you can do a lot of different things with these, and I've had fun all week. These, the things on this one are supposed to be strung. I don't know if you can see that there's a hole in here. They're supposed to be strung, you know, as a necklace. And I just took them and glued them on. And I used um, some liquid pearls right down there because you want to try to make odd, an odd number of things. So I have three things here and then I have three um, little perfect pearl dots and this was the dark chocolate li not perfect pearl liquid pearl this is the dark chocolate and uh, because I didn't want to leave this blank with nothing in it so I used that instead of uh, more more brass so let's see I think that's all there is to tell you oh this is seam binding and this was a stain with a metallic uh, stain of antique bronze and then I also went over it with vintage photo 
and you know I I just poured it out on my craft sheet, crinkled it all up, and then dried it. And then I made a little bow for it here. So um, I, I really like these because they're different. You know, I glued on some different elements that I had in my stash. This is from the uh, typeset strip die, and it's just a little, little cardboard. But I colored it with a black soot distress marker. And it's not cardboard, it's cardstock. Just a little piece of cardstock that was white, and I colored it with my black soot distress marker and then glued them down. And uh, embossed on the back with some other stamps that I had. And I'm going to take these to my craft shows to sell for different kinds of ornaments. Um, these are just uh, bling things. I bought a pound bag of these at Hobby Lobby for half price last week for $5 and it's a it's a pound bag and I don't think in my lifetime I'll ever be able to use it all up I have about half no not even half of those from that bag in you know separated by color in this little container and I've got more than twice as much of that left for five dollars and they're just very versatile and use them for anything um, one thing I did do when I was putting my ribbon on on the hearts and things is I wanted it to um, be stable and not kind of like hang the the um, the heavy tin off. So I used some wonder tape and put it on the back and put pressed my ribbon into it and that holds holds it up straight. And let's see, is there anything else to tell you? Um, well, let's see. You know, I have, I, I go through stuff that I have and then I just put it in a little container and then I dig and play. So, you know, here's, here's another one of those pieces of a bracelet that I tore apart. I went through my old jewelry that I never wear anymore and found some old rocking horse earrings that I'm going to use on something and found some other earrings that, that I thought I could use and tore them apart and put them in my container that has um, all of these little things in it and then when I you know get started going then you know I have my selections out in front of me and I just get to play and let the creativity hit as it will and it's really a lot of fun I'm not sure if you can see this or not But this is my little stash of jewelry findings. Here's the rocking horse earrings that I found. And I found some old cameo earrings. So, you know, you might find a lot of different things um, that you just wouldn't think of. So this is where that one piece came from. Let's see and I just tear it apart and use it as I get some inspiration so um, you know stashes are fun things to have and to use and uh, you know you just really never know what uh, is going to hit your fancy so just you know start pulling some things out and start with a surface that's easy to work with rusted tin is very very easy to work with um, needs no preparation when you're using stains on the alcohol inks and if you want to you can uh, put a finish over it this one I melted clear embossing powder over it three or four times and so it has a texture but I only did it for this one because I realized that um, it really does you know give it a mottled texture and I liked it better without so I only did that on this one but uh, you know it is something different so you know use that if you want to and then on one of the others I'm trying to remember which one it was oh it was the tag I went ahead and because this would be handled quite a bit then I put some sealer on it and I used the DecoArt Traditions multi-surface sealer and first I tried I wanted to see if it if it would wipe off 
so I kind of swiped it on and it and my archival ink did move so then what I did was I just took a makeup sponge like this and uh, put put the sealer on there and then just tapped it up and down and I didn't get the smearing and running and then to fix this I stamped back over top of it when that was dry then I put my sealer back over top by dabbing and it worked just fine so you might want to remember that if you decide to seal so um, I hope I've given you some ideas of some things to do and some ways to play and have a really good week and I'll see you next Monday